Hello, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about adhesive capsulitis. Um, so what is adhesive capsulitis? It is the it is most common in the shoulder and knee. So it's commonly referred to as frozen shoulder, um, but it's kind of a misnomer because it can occur in other joints like the knee in particular, but it also can occur in other joints like the hip and elsewhere. Um, so in the case of adhesive capsulitis, whatever the joint it may be affecting, uh, the joint capsule thickens and tightens around the joint, causing restricted mobility. It isn't clear what the pathophysiology is, so it's not very clear what exactly is going on. Is it inflammatory? Is it degenerative? It isn't clear, but what we do know is that the capsule is thickening, which restricts range of motion and makes it pretty painful and very difficult to move. Uh, so signs and symptoms. So this condition progresses through three stages. Uh, the first stage is the freezing stage. So it's sort of the stage where the condition is building and getting worse and coming on initially. Um, so during that stage, any movement is painful. It's definitely the most painful of the three stages. Um, range of motion is becoming increasingly more limited. And this stage can last anywhere from two to nine months. Uh, then the next stage is the frozen stage. So freezing stage, it was kind of increasing gradually. Frozen stage, you've kind of reached a steady uh, point there in the progression of the signs and symptoms. Um, so the pain at that point might be less. So the pain does sometimes lessen for that stage. Um, but the stiffness and restriction and range of motion tends to be greater during the frozen stage. Um, so it's more and more difficult to use the joint and to move normally. And that stage can last for about four to 12 months. Uh, then the final stage is the thawing stage. And that's where things kind of take a turn for the better and things start to loosen up and improve very gradually. Uh, so the pain and range of motion both gradually improve during that stage. And that can take five months up to two years. Um, so each stage does take quite a while and will depend significantly on the individual, um, why this occurred in the first place, and what types of treatments are you applying to improve the progression. Uh, so the injury mechanism, as I mentioned, we don't really understand this condition. We There's no identifiable cause. There's no clear um, cause and effect that happens here. It's not well understood what the pathophysiology actually is of what's really going on. Um, it does sometimes occur secondary to another joint injury, um, and that would be because when a joint is immobilized, that increases risk of this condition. So like if somebody has a rotator cuff tear and now they're having rotator cuff surgery, the shoulder needs to be immobilized for a period of time afterward, and that person would be at higher risk of adhesive capsulitis as a result. Um, so we don't exactly know why, and some people will have those types of surgeries and immobilization and not have adhesive capsulitis, and others will have it. Um, and so it's it's very unpredictable, and we don't exactly know why that happens. Um, statistically speaking, we do know that people over 40 are more likely to have adhesive capsulitis, and women are also more prone um, also, there are certain diseases that also put people at higher risk of adhesive capsulitis, like diabetes, hyper or hypothyroidism, cardiovascular disease, and Parkinson's disease. Now, that does not mean, like, let's say you're a 40-year-old woman with diabetes and you're having a rotator cuff surgery, that does not mean that you are going to have adhesive capsulitis. It means that your risk is increased, it's elevated compared to someone else who doesn't have all of those risk factors. Uh, but again, we don't really understand this condition and or how to predict it. And so you probably won't have adhesive capsulitis, you just might be at higher risk than somebody else. Uh, so treatment and healing. So it's a tricky one. This condition, um, generally, it's, it's just kind of you leave it alone and wait it out and let it gradually progress and heal over time. Um, when I went through the stages earlier, a couple slides ago, you saw that it can take a long time. It could take years for this condition to resolve. Um, so when left 
alone, uh, this condition usually resolves on its own within one to three years, plus or minus, depending on the person. Um, but there are some things that you can do. And again, there's mixed results in the research on this. And on some studies, it says that some of these treatments do cause improvements and that the conditions resolve more quickly, and others say that they don't. Um, and it's really tricky because if like if it goes away after a year when you're using these treatments, you can't really know if it would have gone away that quickly with or without the treatments. And so that's the problem with some of the studies in this area uh, is that you don't really know what it was going to do without the treatment. So it's hard to say that the treatment really had an effect. Um, so bear that in mind. But uh, you can still certainly try these things and try whatever your doctor or your physical therapist offers for you because it may help. We just don't know for sure. Um, so range of motion exercises and joint mobilization is the number one thing on the list here. Um, so that would be something that you could do with a physical therapist or that you could work on yourself at home um, where you're working on moving the shoulder more and trying to expand your range of motion as much as you're able to. Um, then your doctor might offer you oral steroids, like medication to swallow or steroid injections directly into the joint. Um, in some cases, they'll even put you under, they'll, um, they'll put you under anesthesia and do joint manipulation to try and kind of work out some of the restrictions and move you around. Um, but doing that awake would be absolutely excruciating. So in that case, they would put you under and do it um, and then you'd be sore, it's uncomfortable after once you come out of that anesthesia. Uh, but if it was done well and it's effective, then hopefully the goal is that you would restore some more of your range of motion and that it would help in the process of healing and recovering from this condition. Uh, rarely it could be indicated to do arthroscopic surgery in which they would loosen the joint capsule, but that is not usually a go-to treatment here. Um, and then if the pain is especially difficult, so if it's an especially uh, painful condition, um, then they might also offer a nerve block to help uh, improve the pain. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great day.